Hello everyone, welcome back to another Friday and another casual champion review. Today's episode features Anubis from mythology. I mean, Nasus. We're going jungle Nasus today because I already have a hard time enough trying to commentate over these videos while playing League of Legends. Playing Nasus or trying to lane as Nasus while doing that just seems almost impossible for me. At least in jungle, I can just kind of chill a little bit, you know? You know what else is chill? Fan art section. Yes, this... Uh, technically, this stuff is from a week ago now. For the first time since I started this series, I missed an episode last week. Just so that I'd be able to finish the 200 hidden details from Arcane Act 1 in time. There won't be one for Act 2 and Act 3. I'm telling you that right now. Unless I get like a million more hours to have the time to work on stuff. But thank you to all the fellows who made the Naz's artwork. Sorry that this thing is so late. I mean, the fan art stuff is probably one of the big major reasons I've kept this series going. Because I just love it so much. Thank you, fellas. Alright, uh, so it's gonna be maybe kind of difficult because I'm gonna try and focus to make sure I get the stacks. The reason that I'm playing jungle Nasus as well instead of just going like AP Nasus is because they did change Nasus a while ago so that the big jungle camps give you 12 stacks like a candy minion watch. <laughs> it's all fine. I get the stacks anyway. See? 12. So actually, you know, if I play this right, I might have more stacks than I would have normally if I was in lane. So in terms of lore, Nasus was a scholar of the lost city of Shirima. Got it. Renowned even as a child for his knowledge of history and philosophy. He was brother to the not quite as bright Renekton, who would rather fight than read. But despite their differences, they were very close and looked after each other. And once Nazis grew older into his young adult years, he was inducted into the Collegium of the Sun, where he learned to become the youngest yet greatest military strategist the Empire had ever seen. While Renekton simultaneously grew through the ranks and became his top soldier. And Nazis was a man of the people. He ensured the safety of his soldiers soldiers first and foremost, that they were well taken care of and well paid, so that they feel honored, like they care about the- damn it, they care about the Empire, and the Empire cares about them. Oh, despite <laughs> his many uh, victories in war, he did not particularly enjoy it. He knew why it mattered to help expand the Empire, but he was very concerned with the potential loss of knowledge. So he made sure that with every land that was conquered, any books, scrolls, and any form of culture and teaching would be safely stored in libraries across the Empire, so that any future generations would be able to obtain and have clear access to the same wisdom that he does. And because of his military conquests, his humble nature in trying to help his people and his quest for knowledge in spite of the lands con Oh, I think my, uh, Ambassador Madarda? Oh, I can get this. I don't have Wither. Fiddle stick. No, they have a Teemo. Oh, this is awful. In retrospect, this is actually kind of a good thing. I would have had to try to commentate playing Nazis against Teemo. That's... Oh, because of all these great deeds he's done, he became sort of a hero among the Shreeman people, a decorated veteran. And so decades later, when he came down with a terrible wasting sickness and told he would die within the week, the entire empire pleaded for his safe return. And even the emperor himself pleaded with the ascended host leader, Sataka, who if you don't know who Sataka is, she was one of the first, I think the, even the first, ascended god warrior of Shirima and her Chalikar is the same one that Sivir wields. Where did I get the idea to do jungle Nazis from? They shouldn't to give him the ability to stack off jungle camps, Zed. What about you, huh? Right, made your character able to jungle as well. But it means I can yoink a cannon minion stack from my mid lane. <laughs> I, I hate this game. The Emperor pleaded with Sotaka that Naza should undergo the Ascension Ritual in an attempt to save his life. And this request was granted, but during the ritual, Naza's body gave out on him. The Wasting Sickness had completely withered uh, away at his body, so he had pretty much no muscle mass left. He could hardly walk. But Renekton, who was there at the ceremony, traveled all the way back from his conquest days to go see his brother ascend, knowing that if he tried to carry Nazis to the top of the Ascension Altar, that he probably was not worthy and therefore the sun disc would obliterate him but knowing this was a risk he decided to go through it anyway to see his brother survive he knew how much the people loved him and was willing to sacrifice himself in the name of that love Demo, you should have blinded me you daft oh you didn't even use the blind i can Come on! I hate this game! But you guys know the story. Renekton carried him to the top of the steps. It turns out they were both worthy and both ascended at the same time and became furries. Nazis was now even more wise and could further his own wisdom for eons since the ascended warriors seemed to be able to live forever. But Renekton became a crocodile and far more savage at that. With many instances of Renekton delving too deep into that savagery and Nazis being the only one to help satiate his bloodlust. Or I should say, not satiate, cause him down from his bloodlust. 
plus 12. Wait, I no, Pykel, you bastard. So cut forward many, many years, and Nazis and Renekton are away from the Empire as it's falling. The whole thing with Azir and Zerath squabbling, and then, you know, obliterating the whole Empire, and Renekton has come back to say, what the hell happened here? They fight, and Renekton manages to wrestle down Zerath, and telling Nazis, well, you have to lock me away, I can keep him in check, and this is comeuppance, this is payback for me going too violent, killing all those people. Nazis is like, oh, I don't want to do that, but I guess there's no other choice. I hate this game. So now with the Empire in ruin, and the remaining god warriors fighting amongst each other, eventually becoming the Darken, Nazis withdrew from the entire conflict completely, and secluded himself in the underground labyrinths of Sharima, and forgot who he was. Not literally forget, but he just kind of lost his way, his sense of purpose. But eventually, Azir is reborn, and Zerath is freed. So with the sun disbelief functioning again, Nazis felt hope again that the Shariman Empire may once again rise from the sand. Oh, may once again rise from the sands, and be reunited with his brother again. But we all know how that went. There was a bit of extra stuff as well. Like, he got to meet Talia, he got to see Cipher, and he kind of treats her like, oh yes, you are the ascended host uh, descendant. You must be protected at all costs. Enjoy this fight. And Sivir wants absolutely nothing to do with that. And we get to see a little bit of Nazis responding to what Renekton had become. He's very sad, mainly. But he's also been kind of a depressed soul. Have you ever read the short story? <laughs> Yes, I win, Zed, and you failed. He was willingly just killing people that got in his way. That's how we found out that Wither. It's not just a slow. In the actual canon universe, Wither is rapidly aging you. It is horrifying. Wither. I slowly age you, ageless primordial manifestation of fear. Shtick. And we've gotten to see a little bit extra in Legend of Runeterra as well, where he's trying to help out the Bakai a bit. If you don't know the Bakai, they were the very first ascended beings that failed miserably. So they're ageless and timeless, but lost their minds a little bit. And also are completely deformed and don't have the same powers as the God Warriors. And he's trying to help them out. So he's grown a bit bitter over time, but he is trying to gain his old sense of self back. As for his design, uh, you know, he's Anubis. From Egypt. At what... Yeah, I mean, I... <laughs> But he was originally designed, if you guys have ever seen the old Nazis, he was even more just a flat-out Anubis ripoff than he is right now. Because, I mean, back in the day, it didn't really matter where the characters came from. Tarek was from an alternate dimension, Malphite was an alien, the Darken were aliens. In that sense, having Anubis basically just plucked out of his own reality, they say, oh, you know, Nazis came from an alternate reality. They didn't really matter because of the whole Summoners thing. They can bring whatever the hell character they want, it doesn't matter. So when they have to do the Lord Red, uh, what the heck? are you still doing? I told you we're jungling. It became a whole problem when they were on their way through the big lore retcon. They said, shoot, how do we make our Anubis character fit in Runeterra? And I think they did about as good of a job as they could have. He's still undeniably just Anubis, but at least they try to do a little bit extra to make it fit in Runeterra, even slightly. I think with Nazis, at least they tried a little bit to try and make him match the current Shreeman aesthetic. They gave him that Shreeman color palette with the gold and the green and the blue. And they tried to add a bit of the Shariman patterning on his armor a little bit. It's the absolute bare minimum. You know, it's like, well, we gotta make Syndra fit into Ionia, so we're gonna make her armor a little bit more swirly. Like, okay, yeah, I guess that helps. I think the one thing that is sorely missing from his design, though, I mean, I know he's supposed to be Anubis, but like, I think a big part of Nazis' whole character identity is him being this methodical scholar, and you don't really get anything like that in his design. I know he's kind of lost his way a bit, but something to show of his intelligence. Like, even if he just had a tome or a scroll on his side, something that he would read or adhere to, I think that would go a long way. If you give him glasses, that'd be kind of funny. He's a perfectly competent design. If the goal was just to put Anubis in the League of Legends world, well, he fits in the League of Legends world aesthetically and design-wise. He matches the region he's from, but he's just, well, he is just Anubis, isn't he? This is so painful. This, this sucks. This is the Nazis treatment in full effect right now. I feel like I'm so strong, but they have so much easy peel. It's so hard to get to Johnny. Wow. <laughs> I didn't actually realize just how horrible, like, anti nazis this team is. You got one of the fastest AD carries in the game. This little rat mo. I think I am at the state of the game now where it doesn't really matter. I just... Uh, I just wait out the blind and then do that and then no problem. It's mostly in the early laning that Nazis uh, gets really hard countered by team. But once you get to the state of the game, it, it's fine. I mean, we're doing pretty good. What, 20 minutes, 600 stacks? That's pretty damn good, I'd say. Usually the average these days is like 400 at 20 minutes, right? That's where you usually want to be. Getting at this state is, it seems pretty good. And I guess we can 
<laughs> I guess we are at the state where I can probably talk about the gameplay side of Nazis. So I always find it very funny. Ironically, we have an ambassador in this game that whenever a new character comes out, they are always compared to either Blitzcrank or Nazis. Don't flash. You fl why would why would you do that, Johnny? Why would you do that? It's also kind of funny when you say that, like, oh, his passive is just lifesteal. Oh, you know, right game, how far they've fallen. But then you ask, like, literally anybody on how they feel about Nasus, and three out of four times they say, yeah, Nasus is super toxic and unfun, completely broken character. Infinitely scaling champion whose primary damage source he cannot miss can one-shot you despite building full tank, has a point-and-click slow with up to 99% unmissable poke damage in lane, and has three built-in armor pen cooldown reduction and lifesteal. All of that sounds like, oh yeah, very typical 2024 champion. Nazis was one of the first 40 ever made. <laughs> so I don't know, I, I just find it so funny when people complain about the new characters and like, oh yeah, but Nazis is so simple. Yeah, he's simple, but he's also bullshit at the same time. <laughs> and I played a lot more Nazis than I'd care to admit, actually. He's one of my highest mastery, or like, one of my, uh, oh my god, my, <laughs> my bike has died eight. Teen times? I think there are champions that are inherently more toxic than Nasus. I think without the wither. He said the line. Johnny, isn't this fun? You have 20 kills. Don't you feel like you have 20 kills? At this stage of the game, if they don't have a Moomoo and Fiddlesticks there to peel, it doesn't matter how fed Jin is. I just wither and he dead. But he actually it does give that great contrast between Nasus and Renekton, where Renekton is this very early game bully, aggressive and chaotic, while Nasus is a late gamer. Not really late game. He's more like a mid game hyper carrying. I'm going to start falling off pretty soon. But this mid game hyper carry, methodical and carefully planning out his power scaling. Pun Pike, help! Pike, why aren't you helping? <laughs> Wither probably wouldn't be as toxic as it is if it didn't have the attack speed slow as well. I think if it was just the actual movement speed slow, that's already painful enough as it is. But if you're going attack speed as well, try doing that against Kled or champions who scale off of attack speed with their damage, or even like you're playing Smolder into Nazis. Smolder's E scales with movement speed. If you get Withered, <laughs> You're not going anywhere with that thing. But on Smolder, Smolder is also a stacking champion. But I'd argue, as much of fun as the other stackers are, I, I love stacking champions. You know, you got Senna and Vigar, Smolder, Asol. They're all fun. But Nazis will always be the king. You can't stop me, Johnny. I'm chasing the ends of the earth. I didn't get the stack, but that's fine. Oh. Oh, cool. That's what I'm talking about, though, man. The satisfaction. Smolder is fun when you get big stacks. Aurelian Soul is also very fun when you get big stacks. But none of those stacking champions will ever hold a candle to the satisfaction of a 800 stack... Whoa! I think it's the power that they animate it with. It's actually why I don't like using... Infernal Nasus too much. You don't notice it at first, but the animation speed for Infernal Nasus's Q is actually slower than the base version. Even though the ability itself hits at the exact same time, it doesn't look like it does. Because he has that kind of slow wind up, it just, it loses the satisfaction that you get from the bar. Let me hit you with the bar. <laughs> so I mean, it's so satisfying. I think on Wildered even, they added camera shake to when you do that. I wish that League actually did that, that they added camera shake to when you did certain abilities. That's kind of funny because Wildrift actually did also fix the animation speed for Infernal Nasus Q. Other than that though, it's a really fun Johnny. Look at that. Oh, oh, oh dear. Oh bother. I do like most everything else about Infernal Nazis. The fact that he's Cerberus with the three heads is just really fun. But none of them will ever call the candle of Space Groove. I'm sorry. Space Groove is just the objective best Nazis skin now. The tiny little dog piloting the big space mech using actual video game controls. Pike's dead again. The problem is that Nazis also has a lot of very mediocre skins. Oh, give me one second to say anything, Zed, you rat man. Pharaoh Nazis and Galactic Nazis and the new Nightbringer Nazis, which is just so redundant. He's got so many red fire theme skins that I just try something else. The space Group, I think that's probably why I like it so much. That's so different from anything else that he has. Although, if you want to give him one skin, I know it's technically also a red skin, but just give me the 
the corrupted ascended skins from Legends of Runeterra. I beg of you. Those are so sick. Admittedly, Nazis is probably the lesser of the whole bunch, but still, like, what an awesome skin line of showing what would happen if the remaining ascended actually got turned into Darken. It's just so badass, and they actually did give him the Cerberus heads in that one, too. I'll be honest, I did not have enough to say about Nazis for this game to go on for 34 minutes, but at the very least, I think... If I can get a little extra farm, I could get to a thousand stacks before this game ends, maybe. Or, I could kill Johnny! They got Mountain Soul. Let me move, goddammit, let me- Teemo! 25 Death Pike. Jesus. You can show him what for here, though. You got it, buddy. I- Maybe there'll be enough for one last team fight, and, uh, you know, we can have one last go. Okay, and I can get a thousand stacks before this game ends. At least have one W before this game is over. Oh, what? God, quick play, God damn it! Okay, thank you for watching this week's Casual Champion Review, everybody. <laughs> uh, you know, Nasus experience is what this was. Thank you for watching this week's Casual Champion Review on Nasus, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and I will see you next week for Nautilus. Alright, uh, have a good one, take care, and uh, goodbye. Yeah.